I'm Corey Kellum with Phoenix LiDAR Systems, and in this video, we'll cover the technology required to produce high-accuracy drone-based LiDAR data, how it all ties together, and what's needed for optimization, so stay tuned. In this video, we will focus on the LiDAR system technology, which collects the necessary data used to create a high-accuracy point cloud. We will take a specific look at the hardware used in LiDAR acquisition. In a follow-up video, we'll cover the software side of things and what is needed for post-processing of LiDAR data and how to fine-tune LiDAR data accuracy. Let's take a look at the specific hardware components necessary to make this possible. We need technologies that can provide the position, XYZ, and orientation, roll pitch, yaw, of the LiDAR system, the angle and distance from the LiDAR system to the target being measured, the ability to compute and store all this data in real time, and finally, we need a vehicle to carry this integrated system, aka the payload. Let's start with how drone-based LiDAR works to generate an accurate 3D point cloud. In our previous video, What is LiDAR?, we covered the purpose of LiDAR, how it works, and what it does. So jump back to that video for more details. As a refresher, a LiDAR system emits hundreds of thousands of pulses of light that travel to the ground and back every second. When a pulse of light bounces off an object, aka a target, and returns to the LiDAR sensor, the precise location of the target is recorded by the system, aka a return, with an XYZ position generally accurate to a couple of centimeters. Since these precise targets are being measured at hundreds of thousands of times per second over a wide horizontal field of view, aka a swath, the LiDAR system is able to measure and store accurate 3D information of virtually anything the system passes. The first pieces of required hardware are for determining the position and orientation of the LiDAR system. Begin by envisioning a LiDAR system flying up in the air. The position, or XYZ, location of the system is determined using what most people refer to as GPS. GPS is the constellation of satellites deployed and owned by the United States, providing users with positioning, navigation, and timing services. Other countries have deployed their own constellations of satellites for the same purpose. All positioning satellites combined are referred to as GNSS, or the Global Navigation Satellite System. GNSS enables small electronic receivers to determine their location to a high degree of precision. This is possible through time signals transmitted via radio waves from the GNSS satellites. So how do we know the position of our LiDAR system during flight? There are two pieces of hardware required, the GNSS antenna and receiver. The antenna is where the satellite signals are received, located on top of the UAV. The receiver is located inside the LiDAR system, which basically makes sense of the information being received and turns it into measurements we understand. So at this point, we know the location of the LiDAR system's GNSS antenna. Now we need to know the orientation, also known as the attitude of the LiDAR system. The attitude of the system is the system's roll, pitch, and yaw at any given point in time. The hardware required for this measurement is an IMU or inertial measurement unit. An IMU typically consists of gyroscopes providing a measure of angular rate and accelerometers providing a measure of specific force used to compute acceleration in the up, down, and forward directions. In the interest of simplicity, the IMU's measurements are utilized to know precisely when various flight dynamics are taking place. For example, when the system is taking off, flying straight, and making bank turns. Since the IMU is not in the same location as the GNSS antenna, we need to determine its position. To know this, we need to know the exact distance measurement from the center of the IMU to the GNSS antenna. This measurement is critical and is known as the lever arm measurement, which contains precise offsets from one sensor to the other. This is measured in the side, up, down, and forward reverse directions of the system. Combining the GNSS antenna and receiver hardware with the IMU hardware and the lever arm measurements, allows us to derive the precise position and orientation of the LiDAR system at any moment in time. The second piece of required hardware determines the angle and distance from the LiDAR system to the measured target on the ground. There are various LiDAR sensors, but they all behave in a similar way, sending out pulses of light, measuring the distance to a target, and the angle at which the light pulse was transmitted relative to the LiDAR sensor. LiDAR sensors typically have encoders inside of them, which can be thought of as a clock. The 12 at the top is zero degrees, for example. The three is 90 degrees. The six, 180 degrees, and so on. As the LiDAR sensor spins and emits pulses of light, these angular measurements are collected and tied back to the ranging measurements. 
just like a lever arm measurement was required in order to determine the position of the IMU relative to the GNSS antenna, another lever arm measurement is required to know the position of the LiDAR sensor relative to the IMU. So, let's put it all together. We know the position XYZ of the system in the air from GNSS. We know the orientation, roll pitch, and yaw of the system in the air from the IMU. With a known lever arm measurement to the LiDAR sensor, we know the position and orientation of where laser pulses are being fired from. Finally, we know the angle from where each laser pulse is fired and the range or distance measurement at that time from the LiDAR sensor. This information is used to calculate the known XYZ location of the measured target on the ground. The third piece of required hardware is for computing and storing all of this information in real time. A CPU or computer is built into the LiDAR system and performs all the calculations needed. The CPU calculates the ground target location using the information from the IMU, GNSS, and LiDAR sensor. An SSD or micro SD card is then used to store this information. The fourth piece of required hardware is the vehicle for carrying the LiDAR system, commonly referred to as a platform. For this example, the platform is a drone or UAV used to move the LiDAR system payload over the scan site. Now that we understand the technology required to produce high-accuracy drone-based LiDAR data and how it all ties together, I'd like to give you two tips for how to optimize your data accuracy. The first tip is hardware-related. Use a GNSS reference station, meaning a separate GNSS antenna and receiver, set up stationary on a tripod. As GNSS radio waves travel from the GNSS satellites, through the various layers of atmosphere down to your GNSS antenna, different atmospheric conditions can have an impact on the signal. It can be thought of similar to light passing through different mediums. For example, think of a straw in a glass of water. When you look at the straw in water, it appears to bend. Light travels differently through air versus water, which causes our eyes, or light receivers, to interpret the signal differently. Same goes for GNSS receivers pertaining to GNSS signals. When an additional GNSS is set up on site close to where your LiDAR system is flying, the GNSS on the LiDAR system is experiencing nearly the same unique atmospheric conditions as the GNSS on the ground. With the two GNSS receivers experiencing many of the same errors, we can basically cancel out these errors, resulting in higher accuracy positioning. The second tip is to minimize hardware mounting errors using a boresight alignment calibration. For example, when an IMU is mounted next to a LiDAR sensor, chances are that they aren't exactly on the same plane. Perhaps there is a 0.001 degree roll misalignment from the LiDAR plane to the IMU plane. These roll pitch and yaw misalignment errors are considered to be a systematic misalignment and can be modeled and corrected for it in order to derive the highest accuracy point cloud possible. So to recap, we can use a LiDAR system to precisely measure targets at hundreds of thousands of times per second over a wide swath and store this accurate 3D information in real time through the use of five main hardware components. A GNSS antenna and receiver for positioning information, an IMU for orientation information, a LiDAR sensor for angle and ranging information, a CPU to perform calculations needed in order to determine the ground target location using the information from the IMU, GNSS, and LiDAR sensors, and an SSD for storing all the information from the various sensors. In addition, for optimal accuracy, utilize an additional GNSS reference station and make sure that your LiDAR system has an updated boresight calibration to mitigate positioning and orientation-related errors within your LiDAR data. We hope you enjoyed this video. Phoenix LiDAR Systems is dedicated to making and sharing high quality content on this channel. So if you learned something, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you have any questions or topic suggestions for us, be sure to leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.